Good morning. I am Pamela Gonzalez, a marketing representative of Walter's Kluwer Publisher in Mexico City. We are currently connected via Zoom with Dr. Rusuch Paulina, MD. He is a professor of anatomy and medical education in the Department of Clinical Anatomy at Mayo Clinic College of Medicine and Science in Rochester, Minnesota, USA. In the past, he served as a chair of the Department of Anatomy, assistant dean for curriculum development and innovation, and medical director of Procedural Skills Laboratory at Mayo Clinic. Dr. Paulina teaches gross anatomy, embryology, and histology to medical students, residents, fellows, and other healthcare professionals. He is also the editor-in-chief of Anatomical Science Education Journal. Dr. Paulina is an author of the histology, a text and atlas with correlated cell and molecular biology, a textbook that Walter Kluwer published in Spanish language edition. Welcome, Dr. Paulina. Good morning, Ms. Pamela. I am delighted to speak with you and with, you, with our audience. In the past, I enjoyed participating in meetings of Mexican Society of Anatomy, and I have fond memories. Fond memories of interacting with students and faculty who are using my histology text. Can you tell us what did you experience at the classroom during COVID-19? Thank you for this very timely question. We are living in challenging time and definitely COVID-19 pandemics change the landscape, especially in medical and other healthcare professions education. All faculty members, as well as students, were affected. And they experienced a drastic change in the type of work that they were expected to do. Histology was probably the most prepared for this emergent change since we, at Mayo Clinic, were using already virtual microscopy. Actually, virtual microscopy was used by more than 60% of histology courses in the United States in the pre-COVID era. However, learning to communicate with students via video conferencing platform was a challenge. We used Blackboard Collaborative and Zoom. In the past, we have utilized team-based learning approach in our course and in COVID situation, created interactive teams in small chatting rooms on the Blackboard platform was a completely new experience. The most drastic changes were implemented in the gross anatomy education, in which students were not dissecting cadaver, but rely on interactive live feed session from the dissection room, showing faculty demonstration of prosecuted specimens. However, students had the option to visit Gross Anatomy Lab later that day in small groups to review prosecuted specimens. Also, practical examination in anatomy was performed on web using images from the section, which was quite different than in the previous years. It's too early to determine if the new virtual approach will support effective learning and ultimately deliver quality healthcare professional that we did you change the way you approach classes with COVID-19 and remote learning? And what were key changes you did? From day one, the coronavirus demonstrated the value of technology and illuminated disparity in technological resources. We had to quickly adapt. We implemented a new approaches for lectures and presentation because delivering the old pre-COVID lecture via Zoom or Blackboard really didn't work. We made virtual presentations that were more interactive and more inviting for comments and questions from students. We tried to focus on the big concept first and next introduce necessary details. We have opened line of communication with our students. During this process, we learned a lot about new technologies and new resources that were available for teaching of anatomical science. Is there any recommendations you can give to medical professors and students who are currently undergoing remote classes? In general, for some people, it is hard to separate the boundaries between school and home. 
and this can lead to a loss of enthusiasm and performance, while others grow and flourish in their self-learning and self-managed independent environment. Well, a few recommendations for professor as you ask. Be open-minded and believe that you are part of reinventing anatomical sciences education and you are creating a new imprint of entire medical education. Don't be afraid to try new approaches. These are new types. Be also cognizant of students' time and provide them with the opportunity for self-directed learning. Communicate clearly with your students about assignments and your expectations and uh, in the virtual course. Provide frequent assessments and quizzes and provide informative feedback to monitor students' progress. And for students, plan your individual schedule between virtual sessions to include a time for rest, for exercise, and other activities to maintain mental well-being. Be prepared for the virtual session so you can get the most out of the time spent in front of the computer. We know that you are the author of several medical publications. Can you tell us what motivated you to write the textbook of histology text and atlas? Well, thank you for this question. Uh, when I was in medical school many years ago, I initially found that to find the histology uh, is a dry, boring, and perhaps, for the lack of better words, not invigorating as perhaps the gross anatomy. Histology was taught as a descriptive subject, disconnected from function and removed from any clinical correlation. Pure memorization. Um, I always wanted to know more, how histology relates to function, to physiology, and to understand the molecular basis um, uh, for many features that you could observe with the microscope. As I grew as physician and medical educators, I became apparent, it became apparent that uh, what we are not able to see with naked eye is even more important in truly understanding disease process and the ability to treat people. The microscopic world of anatomy beca became alive to me when I joined the University of Florida in the late 80s and I was invited to work with Dr. Ross on his new histology text. Working on the book, I initiated transition from purely descriptive to clinically oriented histology text by incorporating clinical correlation and molecular and cell biology explanation to understand how cells and tissue are working and how these structures affect human body and disease. Can you please tell us how has your experience been working with each new edition? Yes, um, each edition is a new beginning. I always start with analyzing all students and faculty comments that I receive uh, from reviews initiated by the publisher. I also receive many direct emails from students and faculty from over the, all over the world, offering suggestions and pointing areas that require improvements and, uh, and, and or updates. I attempt to address all of them. I try to incorporate the latest research and its clinical implication for each structure or domain. My commitment to the accuracy of the content along with the peer review process and your feedback creates a textbook that can be trusted. I also am grateful for the great I'm also grateful for a great support from the publisher. I work with many incredible talented illustrators, editors, designers, and many other publishing professionals that make this book successful. How do you feel knowing that your book is considered one of the best works in histology and best sold worldwide? Um, thank you for this uh, nice statement. I recognize that success of anything um, even this book is a journey and not the destination. Therefore, knowing that this book is regarded, as you said, Pamela, uh, the one of the best, it motivates me to do more, to do even more. In my opinion, every successful product needs to be continuously evaluated. 
continuously modified and improved to meet the ever-changing user needs. Book, in my perspective, is really a continuous improvement project. Thank you. What does it mean to you knowing the translation to Spanish of histology text and atlas is regarded as one of the, of the best histology books in Latin America? Thank you for this. I am very honored and humble. But most of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you to you all for seeing the value of this book and in assisting you in gaining fundamental knowledge in histology and understanding the cellular and molecular function of different tissues and organs. I am true to think that some of the histology facts that you gain from this book will be used in clinical setting at the patient bedside. I also think that success of this book comes from the hard work of team uh, of dedicated individuals, um, uh, those like you, Pamela, uh, who are representing the book. Your sales team, led by uh, Mr. Juan Carlos Garcia, provides the book with opportunity to be introduced, displayed in many medical and dental schools and other healthcare professions schools and universities in Latin America. Thanks to your team, my book is being presented on many professional meetings like this one. Here, the eighth edition came out. Could you please give us an introduction of what students can find in this edition? Yes, uh, this book represents two essential resources in one. First, it is a comprehensive text of histology with molecular cell and uh, cell biology and clinical correlation with full color illustration and drawings. Second, it is an atlas with more than 100 color labeled plates accompanied with short description. Text is color coded and highlights terms, uh, key terms, and clinical information for fast and efficient retrieval. Inclusion of sentence heading for each paragraph provides a quick synopsis what is discussed in the specific section below. Many microphotographs are accompanied by drawing side-by-side -side comparison with careful explanation of feature seen on the image. Histology 101, which is a brief one to two page summary of each chapter, is designed as a small post-it notes attached to the page. Uh, separate folders familiarize the students with conditions that they may encounter in clinical rotations. Many tables summarize and compare various tissues, organs, and cells. Therefore, in summary, I think it is very attractive, colorful, and user-friendly book to use in your study of histology. We know the book has 25 chapters. Is there one that was the most difficult to write and why? Well, thank you for this question. I was thinking about that um, quite a lot and uh, each chapter has its uniqueness and its own challenges. If I had to select one, it would be a chapter on the immune system and the fatty tissue and all. The challenge here was to present a simple concept of basic immunology, which medical students usually take much later in the curriculum. But I also wanted to provide students with some understanding how immune system works and how it relates to the histological images of lymphatic organs and tissue. It was an easy task. I rely on many students and faculty to use. In the last edition, I asked Ivan Novak, an immunology professor from National University of Cordoba in Argentina, to provide her valuable feedback, which I incorporated in the new edition. Today, there are eight editions. Within its plan is to continue updating this book? Short answer is yes. As I mentioned earlier, updating the book it is, and its chapter is a continuous process. However, the print edition of the book are usually on the three-year cycle. Thus, I am preparing a new edition, which will probably appear sometimes in 2023. To finish the interview, would you like to dedicate a few words to our audience? Yes, of course. 
I would like to take this opportunity to express my sincerest gratitude to all students and all faculty who are using my book. You are the reason of the success. I would also thank Walter Clover's publishing house for making this book a reality in Spanish edition. And to you, Ms. Pamela, thank you for your gracious welcome and for hosting this conversation. I enthusiastically look forward to participate in person in the future anatomy in Mexico. And to all, stay well. Thank you so much and muchas gracias.